Hello and welcome to another one of Adamonic's review slash trophy review. Of course, review first, trophy review next. This is on the new game Need for Speed for uh, 2005, 2015. Sorry, um, that's necessarily just what it is. Just Need for Speed, not necessarily any type of rivals or anything like that. Just necessarily a reboot, so to speak. Even though I want, it's like necessarily a reboot, but it's not. Because they never, they necessarily never claimed it as a reboot. If anything, it's Need for Speed getting back to its roots, and it's, it's a pretty fun game. Um, so I'm actually gonna go review. Um, we're gonna be starting something new, which is pretty much just um, my concept of how I'm gonna be reviewing games uh, from now on. Which will naturally be uh, story, gameplay, online, graphics, other other things. Um, like to mention about the game, and then rather, do you buy it? Should you buy it? Sorry. And naturally, a new thing that I want to add is when you should buy it. So moving on to the story, uh, Need for Speed did naturally try to have a story to its game, just like it always does. Uh, this one's not really all that impressive. It's I mean, it was entertaining until I got to like the end where I kind of just stopped caring. So I, you know, I cared for it more than I did for other Need for Speed games, which is, I guess, saying something. Um, overall, it, you know, if it didn't have a story in the game, it wasn't, you know, all that bad. It was kind of cool, all the characters that they came in and actual icons in the real world. So I'm assuming if you, if you um, probably knew them then this probably would be a lot cooler because you would actually know them outside this game but me myself a person who doesn't know them I necessarily didn't really care for them on um, the cutscenes are there are necessarily are cutscenes in this game which are played through you know first person perspective as you play the character you, you never really find out who you are you never say anything um, uh, the only thing you really know is that you're a white male and that's about it it's, uh, Spoiler alert, even though it's not really just for story, but at the end, there's a part where you guys take, like, a group picture with, uh, like, everyone in the game, and your character decides to wear a mask at the fucking last minute for no fucking reason, and that was kind of disappointing. Um, but outside that, the story is alright. Um, it's not too good, something worth remembering, but it's not too bad where it's complete trash, so whatever moving on to gameplay uh, oh my god I fucking love the gameplay for this game the, the controls for this game are amazing considering that every car is fully customizable uh, you can customize the how, how hard the brake is how how light the brake is how hard the handy brake is um, customizing how wide or narrow your drift is you can customize um, how powerful or how long your your NOS lasts you can customize just how easy it is to go into drift you can customize if you, you can break into a drift handy break into a drift stuff like that so i really appreciate that and i'm hoping that's something that they don't remove from the game moving forward i hope that's something that is stayed in all need for speed games from this point forward because that was a really cool aspect and probably if not one of my favorite things about this game because there's no because no, normally in racing games um where you necessarily don't like have controls over uh, of like customizing them and stuff like that um you actually just pick a car and the car is handling you know is the one that you pick that's the one car you you drive because it's handling works for you um but with this you can actually pick any car and make it your favorite car when it comes to customizing because you have that option to do so of course not everything is unlocked for customizing you do have to have to buy the ability to uh not unless you buy the ability to customize but um you necessarily have to buy it so like once again when you first start you have nos but when you first buy it when you buy it, that's you can't customize it until you necessarily buy it so that's pretty unique um as you can see here this is just the world i'm just picking um a map a, a race to play nothing too special um the map the map itself it's necessarily pretty big. Um, of course, it could be bigger. I really, you know, I it's not necessarily something to complain about. Not necessarily something to necessarily dis, you know, say it's a bad idea. Uh, I appreciated it. I liked the map. I definitely wish it was more dense because uh, that's one of the problems I have with the game. Um, it's necessarily it's not 
dense enough and when i when i mean about that just traffic traffic and cops that's one of the things i don't like about the game is that there's literally no traffic uh traffic in the game and i really wish there was an option to at least make it more dense just so if you know for some odd reason the, the traffic is you know too dense for you or whatever you can actually turn it down or you can actually turn it up but you know that's beside the point and um, you know most of the time you're just as you can see here just on an empty road just racing and whatever but another thing that i didn't like was the cops the cops honestly if the cops weren't in the game wouldn't i wouldn't notice and that i'm kind of you know being sarcastic with that uh, of course there's the outlaw aspect of the game where you you know you have five ways to, to five ways of play which is speed outlaw crew build and style you know one of them being outlaw where it's just you know doing whatever destroying the environment and being chased by cops and everything like that outside the actual all outlaw specific missions or whatever and maybe like a few maybe like one or two you know, uh, maybe like five missions outside those outlaw missions, do the, cop the cops actually matter and actually become annoying. Outside that, I really wish there was a, um, they took the cops from Need for Speed, I believe Rivals, where you get to play as a cop. That would probably be my dream Need for Speed game, is uh, if they necessarily combine this one with Rivals. Even if they made the cop side of Need for Speed not as, um, not as big and pop, not necessarily as big and populated or as much content as the driver side i would really appreciate that uh and i think that would probably make a good game right there because then you have the superpower and then then the superpower with the uh little tra uh spike strips and all those little special abilities added to the car since you don't really use directional pad for anything in this game that could have you know gave a little bit more to the cop side i, I actually would have gave a lot more because then you have the helicopters but whatever moving on as I said, there's once again the five ways to play. When you do, when you go to your top speed and you, um, you know, necessarily just go fast, uh, you'll build up that speed modifier as you can see from the top. That's necessarily um, drifting and everything, uh, drifting for style. When you play with a crew, uh, match their speed and everything like that, that'll build up your crew meter. Um, using your NOS perfectly and everything like that would build uh, your build style and then anything like destructive. Or whatever will build your outlaw or you know running from the cops which was pretty cool they have the five characters or you know five you know story paths so to speak um of each one which you know going back to the story and it's pretty cool to see that there's an icon for each one of them and that's one that's one of the things that they um specialize in so you know that was a very neat aspect of the end that i appreciate that they you know broken down to that um I, I thought it would be a bad uh, a bad thing with the crew part. I thought you actually would have to build a crew or whatever. It, it's kind of disappointing that you don't. Um, it's kind of just an online server with your with other people you randomly join. And I thought I wouldn't be able to build a crew unless I actually played with friends. But it's pretty cool. It's just playing. It's not. I guess with crew, what they mean is just playing with others. So you can be in just a random event like this one, and just playing with the, uh, just matching the speed of the AI, and that counts for crew. So that's pretty cool because it still allows people like me, who necessarily is not able to, you know, have a ton of friends uh, who wants to join and actually have the game to uh, play all together and stuff like that. Plus, it would be time consuming trying to build up crew to get the crew events if you always if you can only build it up when you're playing with friends. So it's kind of good that they did it that way where you can play off the AI. So moving on from once again the amazing gameplay, um, I I'm moving on to online. You are able to play online. This game is online only. So when you first start, of course you have to sign into EA servers. Once you get in there, you'll join a random lobby, and there's probably like five or six people total in the lobby. I really wish there was probably more. I'll probably make it you know once again making the world more dense. Um, you know, of course you can have your friends join and make. I believe you can make a private lobby if not I am not entirely sure I didn't try myself but um, you can of course have your friends join and one of the things I, I wish they did do with uh, with when you're playing a race is that every time you start a race it sends like a little invite to everyone else in the world so that way that would play more online aspect of the game because I sp play this game for about 28 hours and I've only played maybe like 
five events with actual friends uh, five events with actual friends and or random people online just because there's no real reason to plus most of the people are already doing their own thing um, this isn't necessarily a game people want to play to play uh, play with others I guess but whatever beside the point one of the things that what they did do with the online races is that um, when you go to the map, they'll have like an AR yellow thing next to uh, a racetrack, which necessarily means that one of your friends has beat your time, so you can go ahead and beat theirs or, or their score or whatever it is for that event. And I think that's pretty cool because then it gives you a high alert, like if you want to be, because I'm, you know, once again, um, hard into racing games, so it's pretty cool to see that like, hey, someone beat my score and let me go ahead and, you know, try to beat theirs and whatever. Uh, I don't really see it a lot in the game. I mean, there's like a few events, but you know, like 10% of the events just because of whatever. And I'm assuming that was probably when I was at the beginning of the game being bad and, but, uh, and, and whatnot. If not, some of my friends did do some pretty good, uh, get some pretty good times on some events, and I just been too lazy to go ahead and try it and beat them. But outside of that, I don't really. Uh, that's pretty much the online aspect of the game. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to explore that more Because I've necessarily not seen any online um, I've not seen any racing game really do online all that well all that impressive to where you know It's something like okay all racing games should do this and it should never change from that They're kind of all just trying to do their own thing until they find the right thing So that's not really no biggie on my part when it comes to racing games so moving on nextly to graphics, as you can see, the game looks amazing. It looks a lot better than I thought it would, which is, you know, something worth saying. Uh, I really do love the way the game looks and everything like that. The glares the, when you're going um, at high speed, how the how the you doesn't world doesn't get blurry and, and gets hurt on the eyes like tend to uh, Sonic games, but they tend to do it right too. Um. But outside of that, there's not really much to say about the graphics. It looks good. I didn't actually play the game for the graphics. It's all about the, nicely the gameplay, which once again I love. And that's pretty much nothing worth, you know, not saying on graphics. I never had any problems with loading. Uh, I've necessarily not seen any problems with um, any type of pop-ins, like uh, bad, uh, not necessarily bad graphics, or necessarily. You know, times where, an, um, I can't remember when, like, a layout or something like that is, like, black or preloading or something like that. Um, I've never seen that happen in the game. I've never seen, like, the, the glitch where, like, something in the back world would disappear or turn green or something like that, like I did in Need for Speed Rivals. So, that's pretty cool that, you know, there's, you know, only, like, one, the game only loads once. Outside, when you um, when you first start the game, the game would load. Out, other than that, when you're leaving an area, leaving the garage or going into the garage, the load time is significantly reduced. So it's pretty cool that the game pretty much only loads once. Um, moving on to, um, should you buy it? Yes, I say you should definitely buy this game. Depending on how much you love racing games, I would say it depends on when you should buy it. If you're necessarily a hardcore Need for Speed game, I suggest that you do buy this game. Um, especially, you know, not necessarily as soon as possible. Uh, but you should definitely buy this game. If you really have, if you, if you necessarily are if you're in like Need for Speed series. Because at least to me, this is one of the be the better ones. Not necessarily the best, but definitely one of the, the you know, top five games that I, that I love from Need for Speed. I still haven't built that list, but... <clears throat> it's definitely one of the top fives for at least for me if you necessarily aren't into racers or anything like that then um, this will definitely uh, this is one you can d you know definitely wait a little bit um, when you should buy it if you necessarily are hardcore into need for speed game you should necessarily if you probably already bought it if not you should definitely buy it um, I do I did you know once again pay six dollars for this game I don't regret it I definitely did get my fun out of it and of course I'll be popping it in every so often to nestle play um, some of the longer races like the one I just did um, you know every so often just because I love racing games um, if you aren't um, this is definitely worth you know forty dollars fifty dollars 
if you want an endless wait until it's, uh, it drops in price is just buy a little bit one of the things this game does do once you can see here you can see the customizations going through all the things you can adjust um, and turning them on and off um, you can actually add, as you can see there, I do have VB on there because you can add graphics onto it. Um, that's one of the good side is that you can customize the way your car looks with graphics and everything like that. And I really appreciate how they did that with um, the slots for it and everything like that. And all the different icons and things that you can use. The thing I don't appreciate is that you necessarily, it's kind of hard to be pinpoint accurate with some of them. When you're necessarily trying to, you know, just adjust by just an inch or two. Um, the pinpointing, there's no way to, you know, it's not like Call of Duty's emblems where you can actually adjust it by like one at a time, which is kind of annoying and intends to do, which is why I probably haven't done anything all that real detailed. Um, also, one of the things uh, that's kind of just annoying, which it makes sense, but it's just a little an annoying thing. That's pretty much my big gripe on this game. Is just there's just little things that are just annoying. Is that the graphics don't actually fit on all cars. So if you make a graphic for one, well, t if you make a graphic for one car, it only fits to that car, which makes sense. But it would be um, kind of cool if they somehow adjusted it. But I'm sure that would have been um, some problems. But it's it's whatever. Just different graphics, different cars. Um, as you can see there, there's there's quite a lot of cars, about 50 of them, I believe. Uh, excuse me. And you can have up to five in your garage. I wasn't able to actually fill my garage. Two of them are mm, story event. But I have, it's whatever. It's five car garage. I appreciate it. You know, kind of, some people thought that was a bad thing. But, you know, whatever. I I liked it. Um, one of the other things that they do that you're able to do is that you are able to customize the cars. Um, you know, add spoilers, change the hood, and everything like that. The downside to that is not like every car has 20 options. Some cars have one, maybe two. I think the most I've seen for customization to when it comes to like fun bumper and everything like that is like five, maybe. Um, of course the rims are like tons of them, but outside of that, um, the customizations for like the hood. Um, spoilers, the side, the exhaust, the exhaust pipe is one that has quite a few, um, there's only tend to be, you know, most cars have one, two, have one or two options, which was kind of a letdown, so you're not able to customize all that much when it comes to the car's, um, actual body. Outside that, that's pretty much the full review of the game, um, you know, which the cops were more aggressive and stuff like that. Um, great gameplay was amazing. Customization is amazing. The story's a bit eh. Online, I don't really blame them for not getting it amazing. It's not bad, but it's not you know too good to highlight. But once again, no online, no racing games really done online perfectly to where you know once again all racing games should do it that way. Um, you sh the traffic, the world map needs to be just more dense. Outside of that. Uh, I really do like this game. I definitely suggest playing it, especially if you're a racing fan, especially if you're a Need for Speed fan. Um, outside that, I would give the game probably an 8 out of, uh, maybe 7.5, 8 out of 10, um, if naturally if I was forced to give it a rating. And that's naturally just uh, the review side of the game. As, mm, that's, you know, once again, not that much to really talk about outside its amazing gameplay. And I'm going to say that's probably the game's biggest feature when it comes to customizing the game playing. At least that's the reason why I play that, why I play them. But that's the review of the game. Um, Nestle just going to be moving on to the trophy review for the game. Um, so if you necessarily don't really care about the trophies, then you can arch trophy slash achievements, whatever you can necessarily leave. And I do want to thank you for watching. So the trophy for this game is once once first of all I would just want to start off by saying that there are no collectibles even though it's weird because um, I would actually wouldn't mind getting the collectibles because the collectibles are getting donuts um, naturally just performing donuts in certain areas taking like a screenshot of your car in a certain area making um, finding body parts or finding uh, component parts for your car um, our layout through the game and then there's even a collectibles of just doing an event for each racer in the game of our all the many AIs and necessarily just doing an event with them but once again there's no collectibles so that was kind of cool 
Um, there's 31 trophies for the game. Uh, of course, the one plat, three gold, 19 silver, eight bronze. Which is, I just now realized that nine bronze. There's more silvers than bronze in this game. That's whatever. So you start off. There's of course the platinum trophy that you need. Um, there's going to be home is where your car is, is, which is just acquire your spot in the garage. Is, you'll get that almost like five minutes into the game. You have early days, which is eat, re, uh, reach rep ten, um, getting noticed, reach rep twenty five, and can I get your autograph, reach rep fifty. Uh, once again, pretty self-explanatory. You'll once you'll meet, you'll get to fifty before you do everything in the van, uh, in the game. So that's not that's something you have to grind for. And that's even with the reduce from um the beta, because then the beta was really easy. It took it, like it was super easy to level up. Um, there's guidance from Amy, which is complete against Amy's high score powerhouse contract. Um, you'll get mission specific for characters um, as you go through, and you'll just you once again this is something you'll get naturally just playing the game. Um, RBW meet the legendary builder Nakasaka, um, and and be, um, that's nicely once again there's icons in the game when you meet when you meet any one of them there's a trophy for each one of them um, iconic builders just become become a build icon nestly when you finish I would guess to say the icon the builder path you'll master it and it's nicely when you it's nicely just when you beat all the icon um, not icon but when you beat all the builder paths and everything like that you'll once again master that um, there's I am speed beat Magnus's record time be uh, urban outlaw beat Rick Magnus's personal challenge Which is once again he'll challenge you just beat it um, Fulfilling the need become a speed icon once again when you beat all the speed uh, um, Missions you'll get that the hooligan become a style icon S um, Single t single take star complete a single take of Ken's Gerikis Gim I, I can't pronounce his name, but once again these are just when you were doing the style um, pursuit when you're doing the style path um, there's beat the outlaws beat unstoppable beat the outlaws to road, uh, roadblocks on a pursuit challenge which is essentially just aggro the cops until you get like five stars or something not necessarily five stars but just aggro the cops for like five minutes literally and then drive off and you'll go through two roadblocks it's one of the things you need to do to complete the outlaw so you'll, you'll once again actually get this while playing the game uncover the truth about the outlaw once again just when you meet when you're doing the outlaw path you'll do you'll be get that when you finish all the outlaw uh, missions you'll be you'll get above the law which has become an outlaw on outlaw icon one for all for yourself find yourself a crew you'll get that once again, as you go to the game, Choo Choo, complete the drift train mission with the Risky uh, Devil Crew, which is just uh, drift trains that type of drift. You'll nextly get those. Uh, you'll once again doing the crew side. You'll get it, and all for one, become reach the top with the reach your crew when you finish the crew icon um, story path. There's become the ultimate icon. The ultimate icon become the ultimate icon. Sorry, that's. Once again, when you finish all the paths and finish all the missions for each, you know, outlaw, speed, style, builder, and um, and everything, you'll become the ultimate icon. And now, you know, once again, it's a zero gold trophy. Tune for excellent win an event with a tune card. You'll get that just playing the game. Just as long as you tune your car and win an event. Yeah. Beyond extreme tune a car to max drift or max grip setting. This is one you'll have to wait until later in the game where you can uh, get one of those upgrades where you can max when they'll have it'll give you the max it'll give you the potentially to max or the settings to get to drift or grip you nearly just set everything to drift or set everything to grip leave the the garage drive a little bit and then go back and you get the trophy you don't necessarily have to play an event or anything there's triple crown win three events in a row self-explanatory pretty easy to do you'll just get it naturally social steen Social scene. Get called out by other racers 50 times for your skills. This is something you'll get naturally just playing the game as you um, win events. After you win an event, someone will just they'll when it's showing you like your score and everything, it'll show you. Uh, it'll show you. Someone will just naturally just call you out, and that's pretty much what that is. Um, full house. Fill each spot in your garage. Just so you just buy cars, even less the cheap ones or the story ones, and you'll be able to get that. Um, build building your stable. 
purchase another car with the garage. Um, serious fun, complete 15 daily challenges. Once again, there's daily challenges that are changed every day. Just completing 15 of them will get you that gold trophy. There's no filter, take your first screenshot, self-explanatory. Um, the perfect moment max out all five scoring styles in a single moment, which I thought would be a lot harder to do. I came to find out that I naturally did this just playing the game, and I you know, and when you get to the end of the game, you can't, I've done it multiple times in one race, so I want to so I want to say this is one you could miss, but I I really I highly doubt you will miss it. But I'm gonna say this is the next one you'll just get playing through the game. Um, there's full power, equipped to top end performance parts of each category of your car. Necessarily just maxing out the um, your upgrades for your car. That's pretty much that. Training wheels is the last one, which is learn how to drive with style. You'll get that early on. <laughs> Um, it's just learning, it's just, once again, I believe it's doing one of the style events, one of the, f the first style events, but outside that, that is necessarily a trophy review of the game, once again, 31 trophies, um, not necessarily a very hard game to plat, um, um, and it's also not time consuming at all. There's no, once again, there's no collectibles or anything like that. If any, if anything, most people, you could probably accidentally, it's one of those where you can accidentally platinum the game if you're just playing the game and doing everything, to be honest. Because there's not a single trophy that I really had to go for in here. But outside that, that's the review and trophy review for Need for Speed. Um, I do want to thank you for watching. If you necessarily did watch all the way through here, there definitely will be more videos coming up. You know, Fallout 4 eventually, uh, and Black Ops 3. But all my social links will be down in the description below. Will be in the description below. Um, all my social links: Twitch, Twitter, and Twitch, Twitter, Facebook page on my random Facebook page, um, Snapchat. <laughs> pretty much all that will be in the description below um i'll definitely have um you know some other some other links that you should check out just for need to be related stuff just like the trophies and everything like that in case you know necessarily need some help on them not that you really need to most of them are kind of self-explanatory um other than that once again thank you for watching um literally just gonna let this event play out and you guys can just you know listen to that till then what do you know it's already over <laughs>